Hello everybody and just here and welcome back to Unnamed Memory Episode 4 in which... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Something's gonna happen. Maybe. Probably. I mean, we still don't really have any like overarching plot, plot line, so it's kind of hard for me to tell what's exactly going on and uh, what's exactly going to be going on, I guess, would be more apt. And uh, the fact that apparently they're skipping a lot uh, doesn't help. Uh, I was uh, wondering, for example, uh, why in the previous episode, at the end of the previous episode, uh, Tinasha just casually sat on uh, in Oscar's lap and they were hugging and whatnot, but apparently at this point in the light novel they're already very like physical, hugging and touching and holding hands and stuff like that. I mean... Good progress for three episodes. <laughs> uh, oh boy. Uh, right, in a previous episode, uh, what exactly happened? Well, um, Oscar was being stupid again and irresponsible, putting herself, uh, putting himself in danger, trying to save some random village from from human eat man eating flowers things that apart were they controlled by Lucrezia or not I'm not sure and Lucrezia is the witch of the forest that they've met of course uh, but was she the one who created those plants or was she on the way to destroy them I don't know w what actually became of those plants have the problem of the village been solved or are peasants still being eaten on the daily when trying to scavenge for raspberries? <laughs> we didn't really get a closure, did we? Uh, but yeah, what mattered the most, of course, is that Oscar met Lucrezia, the witch of the forest, uh, who uh, talked to him a little bit about, you know, witches and Tinasha, and uh, they discussed the ways of uh, getting rid of his curse, possibly, potentially. And uh, apparently Lucrezia knows Tinasha, and she casts some spell on Oscar that uh, gave him dreams, like wet dreams, and she extracted his blood and semen, and uh, he would have died if Tinasha didn't notice. What the fuck? <laughs> what was your plan, Lucrezia? I mean... Her plan was that, of course, Tinasha is going to notice, right? And because she's the only one who can smell that uh, Oscar smells different, of different perfume, she will be, she will get the message and, oh, she will contact me. We're gonna, you know, talk again like the besties that we are. Um, a little bit more convoluted than just telling Oscar, hey, yo, uh, tell Tinasha to visit me. We can meet for a cup of wine or some tea or something, catch up. No, no, that, that was the better solution. I mean, witches, right? Am I right? Witches and their weird uh, ways of doing things. <clears throat> mm. Tinasha, of course, thought that Oscar found a woman, but yeah, it was just uh, Lucrezia's spell. And uh, to break that spell, Tinasha had to cause Oscar to uh, strangle the dream version of herself in the dream. And Oscar really didn't like that. And they had a little bit of a spat over it. And then they hugged and it's good. And that was the episode, as far as I can recall. Besides that, not really much. Oh, oh, uh, the like two people, the the boy and the girl, who are like time travelers or something, or like world travelers. They're ensuring that the timeline goes as it should go. And they got the gem from the monster that Tinasha slew, but that gem is also with Tinasha's dragon. And uh, they were attacked by a weird white-haired man who claims that the girl is very important for him. 
and the man killed the the dude that was with the girl and the girl teleported away i don't know either but that's basically what happened uh i don't know it it might be just my mind being a little bit discombobulated after having just watched the uh, episode 8 of yukiuna because that was a mind fuck uh it might be i don't know my forgetfulness talking or something but that's how i remember the previous episode uh there wasn't much to it honestly besides the appearance of lucrezia uh and uh yeah, besides the appearance of Lucrezia and those, the boy dying and the girl being teleported and the introduction of who I assume is going to be the big bad, the white-haired man. That was the previous episode. Uh, in today's episode, honestly, anybody's guess what's going to happen. Uh, it might be Oscar and Tinasha going on a date, it might be saving the world from a meteorite strike, it could be uh, defeating a bunch of wyverns, or it could be hunting down a troll, or it could be any number of things really, whatever, a war has started in the kingdom. <laughs> Anything can happen, honestly, with no overarching story, I have overarching overarching storyline i have no way of telling what's exactly gonna happen i can't even predict where tinasha's and oscar's relationship is gonna go if they're already this far in three episodes which is took like what four five months so by by the end of the season the Tinasha's contract is gonna be up, so I, I wonder where it goes. I just wonder. I'm just curious, honestly. Uh, I'm just gonna stop rambling uh, because that's basically what I'm doing right now and uh, start watching this episode. Uh, how about that? Uh, to do it, you will need your subs, of course, to follow along with me. I'm gonna need my sound to hear what's going on in the show and I'm gonna have to ask you guys for support. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon, YouTube, down below, or not. Share my content, spread the word, it costs you absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now with all of that out of the way, we can start watching episode four of Unnamed Memory in three, two, one, go. Training. Tinasha? No? Not interested? I myself would be curious. Oh? I mean, with a sword like that, sure, he probably could. Nice battle music. And uh, Tinasha is using her sword and uh, wand combo. And her wand is basically a rapier, but a very thick rapier. Hmm. That's actually a cool idea for a weapon for a mage, right? A wand, but made of steel and sharp. You can cast your Wingardium Leviosa with it, or you can stab a motherfucker. <laughs> So, in this episode, we established what people have been telling me uh, in the comments that, yeah, Oscar is actually fine 
adventuring outside because he's a very strong swordsman. He's the strongest there is. Uh, now we have it established. Now, sure, I can take it that, yeah, he's actually that strong. I mean, I guess he did conquer the tower. So that has to, you know, serve for something. Then again, the tower wasn't created by Tinasha in a way that would be actually, you know, lethal. So there is that. I still think it's wildly irresponsible for a crown prince to just, you know, oh, another settlement needs your help. He just goes there and fights a fucking mutant. What's up with you, girl? Hmm. Are you a battle mage? Yeah, I mean... Probably. And if you were to be ensnared by this, what would you do, right? Training by doing. Mm -hmm. That's a very chipped sword, yeah. I mean, probably, yeah. Why did that thought even occur to you? It's like, here, have a drink. It's it's not laced with anything, I promise. It's clean. I, I have not added anything to it. Here, have a drink. Like... You walk up to someone, oh, I really don't want to kill you. I, I'm honest here, man. I really don't want to kill you right now. <laughs> uh, I mean, rumor spreads. How many, I know, random servants have seen her and put two and two together. Someone overheard a couple of your subordinates talking about it, right? It doesn't take much to spread a rumor. Well, he came here for nothing then. IT? Hmm, that's the first we hear this name. Is it you who spread the war? Miralis. I recognize this name from somewhere. Hmm. Oh, and I guess Lucrezia can just drop by.
<laughs> what would be supposed to happen? Is it like, I don't know, every witch is destined to destroy the world or something like that eventually when they grow too strong to contain their power within their bodies they explode like a nuke or something i don't know that would be my guess Hmm. Mages, does it include witches though? Fair. Yeah, I mean, them's the rules. You climb the tower, you can have a wish. There's another witch nearby. Maybe you could employ her. Why? What's your deal? What? Did he spot a prospective mage, or what? <clears throat> hmm, interesting. I'm guessing that's where Kuskul is. And is she mind-controlled? Probably mind-controlled, yeah. Yeah, blank eyes. Yep. Yeah, preferably leave to Kuskul, school, right? Wait, have you not noticed some, I don't know, magical aura around her? Or is it something that you have to... Oh, thank you, Lucrezia. <laughs> Little bit of your semen, please. Oh, Lucrezia. Hmm, not allowing herself to cry? Or is there something more to it? Oh, in the tower? Yeah, a little bit of sparring, then a cup of tea at the top. That's a nice pastime. Sure. Speaking from experience. Uh, 
absolutely speaking from experience. And now she's not holding back. <laughs> All right, official duty is done. Time for sparring. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How about three against one, then? Or invisible whip, sure. Hmm. So can he only see them when he's focused? Or is it not that he can see them, but rather he can, like, heal them and react instinctively? Or he's been overworking himself and that's why he didn't pay attention, because he wasn't focused. Probably, yeah. <clears throat> Don't you have a bed here, Tinasha? Good point. Hmm. Uh, is it a case of everybody having it? Right, because the sword breaks magic, essentially, on contact. Yeah, maybe not flail wildly, but actually focus. There we go. And here's the magical circle. Yeah, easy enough. Humst. Huh? Oh, a random bunch of adventurers. Okay. I mean, she's floating. That's proof enough. <laughs> Good. That would be useful, yeah. Let's not kill anybody today. Yeah. 
Yeah, you're not getting your wishes fulfilled quite yet. Last day, what do you mean? Was it supposed to be like a short-lived training program rather than their new, you know, habit? Like sparring every Friday or something like that? I guess. Why is the maid here now? Like, I know that Tinasha saw the, like, aura around her and whatnot, but... Sure. They're attacking. Oh, no. Hmm. Have we even seen him? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. Oh, this dude. We've seen him in the opening, I think. Did he not have family? So, wait, did Als not know? I thought he's like... Oscar's close friend. <laughs> Does he? I did not get that impression. It's not like you to be this clumsy. Okay, but can you like weld ceramics? You don't need to turn back time to fix a broken pot. <laughs> oh, it's the uh, the mage dude. And the white... No, that's Miralis. Why are you blinking the screen like we're in an Indian... telenovela? Soap opera, sorry, that's the better English name for it. Huh. I guess we have a little bit of an overarching story and being introduced slowly but surely, right? The fight, the uh, possible, I guess, war with the mage country, right? 
Yeah, that's the dude who died. Hmm. I'm gonna have to go through this episode again to fully comprehend what happened, honestly. Like, I know things happened, and I know what exactly happened, but I can't, I don't know, have it stick in my head, I guess. Unnamed emotion. Hmm. Interesting what kind of an emotion it would be. I mean, I guess it's unnamed, so we can't really have a name for it, do we? Uh, we have a name for watching this episode again, though. <laughs> that was a bad segue. Uh -huh. Yeah, sparring with the prince. She has a little bit of a... Right? Concave. Convex? Concave. Right? Concave face. It's the second time in this episode that she looks like she's been slapped in the forehead. Or, I guess, in the bridge of her nose. How powerful will this man become? I mean, if you keep training him, he will become much more powerful. That's for sure. Uh, I really enjoy her weird spike sword. It's cool. I like it. Like a combination of a wand and, uh, and a rapier, rapier, however you want to pronounce it. Mm -hmm, yeah, sparring again or fighting in earnest, I don't know. A breath of life into image. I have no idea what this title could mean. Legit, I have no idea what it could mean, what it could mean in relation to the episode. That's how you use magic for close combat. The, are you aspiring to also be a battle mage, perhaps? Using magic in close combat as well? Would be nice to have a couple more uh, spell swords around, not gonna lie. I've never seen a mage who uses a sword to cover their offense and defense. Uh, I assume it also has to do with like how you cast magic, right? Uh, if you're a mage and you need both hands to do the abracadabra gesture, then you can't really hold a sword in your hand. If you need a wand, then, well, you're holding a wand and you're focused on doing swishes, swashes with the wand and not really focusing on your on a sword in your offhand or, you know, the other way around. But if you can just will projectiles to appear then, you know, nothing's occupying your hands anyway. Might as well grab a sword and go in close combat. Meanwhile, all the time spawning fireballs behind you and throwing them at the enemy. It's, right? Makes sense. Uh, but I assume you have to be a particularly strong um, mage to be able to wordlessly and uh, gesturelessly and, you know, just passively, basically, uh, cast magic. Teaching, yeah. Seems like she is indeed teaching him how to fight uh, magic users. I really don't want to kill you after all. How naive of you. Uh, there, this theme... Of Tinasha constantly repeating, Oh yes, Oscar will be the one who slays me. Oh, he will kill me one day. Oh, I will fall at his hand. Will he be my killer? I'm not getting it fully. Like, uh, I understand what she's saying, right? Uh, witches are powerful. Duh. So someone equally as powerful needs to be there to slay a witch. If that someone has an anti-magical sword, well, they are basically a born 
nemesis to any witch out there. So yes, if there was someone who would be able to kill Tinasha, it would probably be Oscar. Yeah, sure, absolutely. But I don't get how, why they are so, I don't know, forthright about it, right? So, so overt. I really don't want to kill you, right? I, I don't want to die yet. I still have plenty to do. It's, it feels... It feels as if there was some sort of a, I don't know, a prophecy in place or something that the wielder of the Akasha will slay the witches and get rid of their influence once and for all, or something like that, right? And it must come to pass. So they're like, oh yes, we are destined to fight and you are destined to kill me one day like Voldemort and Harry Potter. Right? That's the vibe I'm getting here. But we haven't been told of any such prophecy, law of the world, call it what you will. So, I don't know, I'm finding it weird. There, Tinasha's almost obsession with dying at Oscar's hand. Probably something that was established in the light novel. Maybe even something that was established in previous episodes, but just, you know, offhandedly, and I didn't really notice that. Could be either way. I'm not sure. Uh, uh -huh. If you become my wife, that'll be fine as well. Yeah, sure. Kuskul. Kuskul in the north. Envoy from Kuskul. Mm -hmm. Tinasha or Eiti. How does she get the second name? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miralis. But I also know the true reason you're here at the palace. What is that true reason? Uh, protecting someone? I know, she's like a white magical aura. So maybe a priestess of some sort? I don't know, she went after the, the dude from Kuskutia? Kuskul. She went after this dude for some reason, so I would assume she's protecting the country? Protecting Tinasha? I don't know. I have no clue. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna note down Miralis, though, because she seems important somehow uh, unnamed memory there we go miralis is a priestess protecting some thing someone i know undercover uh how do where do i know the name miralis from let me google that right quick <laughs> i don't know there's a lot of like LinkedIn and TikTok and Facebook accounts named Miralis and Miralis has an account on Etsy. Is it just because it's just a name? It could be just because it's just a name. I know. Uh -huh -huh. Do you have a death wish? Yeah, that's actually something I'm quest I'm you know asking myself. Does she actually want to create the ultimate? killing machine against witches is she afraid that she will lose control of her powers or something like that i don't know mm -hmm. tinasha is afraid of losing control <coughs> 
of her magic or something trains Oscar to kill her when that happens. If that happens, although she behaves like it's a matter of when and not a matter of if. I'm not sure myself why I felt like fighting him, because he wanted to have fun, because there are very few people who are able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with you, against you. He's the first opponent that you were actually be able that you were actually able to be fighting more or less in earnest against, probably. I just felt like it might be nice to have someone who could kill me if anything happens. Why is she so obsessed with that something happening? Because something already did? Maybe. Uh, Tinasha lost control once already. Uh, seems like a valid theory. We just completely disregard that she has another name. Sure. Uh, Kuskul's founding restored the rights of mages persecuted in Tairi. So now they've become the uh, country of mages, basically. And they want the strongest of the mages, a witch, to go there and help them... Mm, you know, research magic and stuff. Mind control, of course. Collection of majors who proclaimed the independence this past year. Meredina. Uh, let me take a good look at Miralis once more. Nah. Yeah, I thought that maybe they're related, right? Both are blondes, but the eye color is different and the shade of blonde is different as well. Uh, would explain why Miralis went after the uh, the dude from the mage country, right? Because maybe she's protecting Meredith? Meredina? Sorry. Actually, fuck it, might as well be the case. Um, Miralis is pro Protecting Meredina, right? Meredina, Meredina. Uh, it would also explain why Miralis has some magic aura around her and Meredith, Meredina, sorry, uh, despite being a fighter, like melee swordswoman, has interest in magic, right? Maybe it runs in the family, maybe she's from a. Um, what am I call it? Uh, not wealthy. That's not the word I'm looking for. Uh, from like a you know high-ranking family, basically she's like the daughter of a viscount or something, and uh, that's why she can use magic. She's been trained in it, but she wants to serve the king as a general. So the viscount sent Miralis to covertly uh, look after Meredina. Yeah, right? Makes sense, I think. Maybe. Why Why was your first instinct to put a sword to Al's throat, Oscar? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> leave this country at once, of course. You conniving woman, deceiving men's heart. It really got to Tinasha for some reason? I don't know why, I don't know how, but apparently it did. Apparently it's a sore spot for her. She doesn't want to be seen as a temptress. Cool. And it's bad enough to cause her to want to cry. And uh, bad enough to cause her to not notice mind control. Well, thankfully Lucrezia was here. Kuskul, yeah, Kuskul, 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 Kuskul. And we're sparring in earnest, and uh, we can just let loose in the tower, right? We don't have to worry about destroying the palace, we don't have to worry about uh, bystanders getting hurt. It's a perfect place for sparring, really. I want you to have lots of options available to you.
yeah, uh, something tells me Tinasha is, uh, you know, she she is obsessed with, you know, should something happen to me, Oscar will be there to kill me, and then now she says. Uh, that, yeah, I don't want you to regret the lack of strength, I want you to have options. Uh, something tells me that something happened in her life where she was out of options, she had to let her raw magic power loose, explode, wipe out a city from the surface of the earth, and she regrets it. Something tells me it's something in that ballpark. Maybe. I'm not sure. I want you to choose the path you want from as many options as possible. Yeah, I was deprived of those options. My only option was to give up control and become a magic monster. And uh, now I'm also creating options for myself, right? Should I become a magic monster again, you will be there to bring me down, right? Maybe. Sparring, training, T. Sparring, training, T. Mm -hmm. And he's very tired. I assume in the light novel he like pulled an all-nighter trying to sort some documents or something like that happened, probably, but then he was like, no, no, Lazar, I can't go to sleep. I made a promise to Tinasha I need to go spar with her, right? Something like that probably happened. And does she really not have a spare bed here? Sleeping in a chair is not comfortable. What is she doing in this bowl? She's not brewing tea. She's doing something. You can't use magic as long as you wield Akashia. Uh, that's cool. I like it. I like this limitation. Of course, an anti-magic sword would also impair the user's own magic. Right? You can't cast a fireball if you have an anti-magic field around essentially emanating from the sword if you get rid of the sword if you put it aside somewhere leave it at the palace you might be able to use magic but anti-magic sword is kind of more powerful you know more useful than basic tier fireball that you could probably cast you're i mean oscar is not a master of magic i don't think he has the you know chops to be on par magically with a witch so it's a better idea for him to give up the magic and use the anti-magical sword instead. Makes sense. And yeah, you can see the magic, you can see the magical circle, cut it, and the whole entire spell falls apart. He really is becoming like a dedicated one-track anti-magic fighter, doesn't he? He has an anti-magical sword, and then he can also see magic, so that he knows where to cut. He's the, you know, the perfect, uh, the perfect magic killer, essentially. Anti-magic killer, I guess. Send him against any wizard, send him against any witch, and he will emerge victorious. And a convenient bunch of random adventurers. Yeah, of course, not a problem for Oscar whatsoever. I think we can make today our last day. Why? It's... All this time I was under the impression that it's something that they're just doing regularly, right? Every day at 5, we meet up, we spar for an hour, then we have some tea and we go back to the palace. Or every Friday or every Thursday or... Right? Something like that. Some sort of a rhythm to it, but apparently it was more like a training regime where Tinasha trained Oscar for like a month straight every day she trained him to the point where she wants him to be and that's where it stops I know, kinda weird can I win a fight? yeah it wouldn't be any fun if we knew the answer, of course 200 mages gathered in school spirit sorcerers 2. The average nation is anywhere from 20 to 30 mages. That's not a lot. Uh, means that magic is fairly rare in the world. It's not something like, you know, 
oh every human has uh, some magic in them it don't, it's only a matter of getting that out some have you know some might be able to learn how to use magic on their own some need the help from the college yada 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 something like that no it's 20 to 30 people in every country are born with magic the rest is magicless or the rest has magic weak enough to basically not count for anything interesting makes witches so much more powerful though doesn't it because if a country has 20 mages, I would say that a witch counts for 20 mages, if not more. It really makes witches a force that can level countries and not even mages can stand against them. Very interesting power scaling there. They aim to summon demons as well, apparently. It seems weird having Miralis here, just listening in hearing about the plans of what the whatchamacallit the Kuskul wants to do like why is she here it wasn't established at any point right well no just tinasha said hey yo bring the maid in to our war room why i i'm assuming in the light novel it was it was established. Is me wait? Is Miralis one of the uh, like time traveler kids? Yes, Valt and Miralis. Duh. That's why Tinasha noticed there's something special about her. That's why there is something special about her. That's why she's powerful enough because she's a timekeeper or whatever you want to call her. Uh, doesn't answer the question uh, how did Tinasha manage to convince Oscar and um, Lazar to have her here in the room? I don't know. Did, did she tell them the truth about Miralis? Did she just say, yeah, the maid is trustworthy? I don't know. Kind of wish it was explained. Uh, because as it is now, Miralis went from being a random maid to being a part of their like inner circle within the span of the same episode with no explanation whatsoever uh, and also kind of raises the question what happened what were those moments where we've seen Miralis and uh, and Val Valk Valk the other dude were they flashbacks or when she was teleported has she been teleported into the palace or what exactly happened there i don't know i'm assuming again that it was mentioned in the light novels just was hasn't been adapted they aim to summon demons uh -huh. and yeah let's investigate one of the generals just randomly died the one apparently who brought miralis here hmm and he trained both Al, Als, and uh, and Oscar. With I've informed General Als regarding the curse on your highness. Why? Exactly. Is it like? Is there like a, you know, pool of people that must be in the know, or did Als take over the? take over for the previous general so that he also needs to be in the know or what exactly is going on there besides i honestly thought that Alice already knows that at least Alice and meridina know but that like at least at the very least Alice. but maybe not maybe he wasn't as close of a friend to oscar as i thought i don't know uh, uh -huh, sounds really bad yes it does Hmm. It really... I might be looking too deep into that, but it really doesn't seem like her to just be clumsy enough to knock something over and then not have the... Um, the reflexes strong and fast enough to allow it to fall and allow it to crack, right? Even if she were to bump into the table and knock something over, I would imagine she'd be like, whoop, no, you're not falling. I'm gonna telekinetically bring you back, put on, put all the 
sugar cubes in, put everything in place, everything's fine, nothing's broken. Uh, but no, she knocked it over, she let it fall, and uh, let it crack. Now, narratively, I guess it makes sense because the whole talk about I can't undo what's broken, right? I can't turn back time, it's not something that is possible, all living things share the same fate of death, right? It's a narrative lesson in... Uh, Basically, she can't turn back time. If someone dies, they're dead. There is no necromancy. She can't fix a... I don't know. She can't fix death. She can't fix something being destroyed. Narratively, it makes sense. Sure, absolutely. Uh, but then again, in case of a lid like that, she could just transmutate it together. She could... Un and fire it back into clay, stick it together and then fire it back, right? There are options if you have magic. You don't necessarily have to turn back time to fix a broken lid. Um, but yeah, narratively, I guess it makes sense. And then we immediately witness death of uh, Kuskul uh, dude at the hands of Miralis. And yeah, it also explains where I heard this name. I heard this name in this very show. Duh. <laughs> You've got some nerve showing yourself here. Your lord killed him in front of my eyes. Uh, oh, so I guess the white-haired dude is the leader of the Kuskul. Huh, yeah, we are, we are finally getting an overarching story, aren't we? Oh, yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh-huh. Did we get the name of the white herd dude? Probably. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna call him white herd dude. A white herd dude leads Kuskul. school. And uh, he said that Miralis is very important for him. Because of her magic alone? Probably not. For magic, he wanted Tinasha. Because she's able to influence the... I don't know, the time itself? I don't know. Something like that, probably. Uh, and uh, that's the wolf. The, uh, oh, oh! you can like recreate the monsters from their gems? Something like that. You defeat a monster, the monster drops a gem, you pick up the gem, you use it like a Pokeball and you summon the monster back, but the monster is now under your control. Is that how monster gems work? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Once I understood that Miralis and the girl, the timekeeper girl, are the same person, everything makes sense now. Good. Good, 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 good. Good shit. Unnamed emotion. Unnamed memory, unnamed emotion. Do we have a name for anything here? Ah. <laughs> uh, Alright. That was a good episode. That was a good episode. Initially, uh, I was very confused after just watching it, but uh, after watching it for the second time, after going through it, uh, I understood much more from it, and it really made it uh, better in my eyes. Uh, yeah, I had fun. Uh, I like how we are finally introducing some sort of an overarching plot, right? The country of, of Kuskul, the white-haired dude, is not just, you know... Miralis, her partner, the white herd dude, are no longer just, you know, somewhere separately shown in a vignette every now and then. We don't know if it's the same uh, timeline, if it's a different timeline, has it happened hundreds of years ago, or has is it going to happen in the future, right? It was kind of vague. Uh, no, we know the time frames, we know the timeline, uh, we know that everything here is connected, we're not watching several disjointed stories unfurl, but rather everything is connected here. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad we're finally getting some sort of an overarching storyline. Now I can properly make predictions, right? Now I can sit here and say, huh, 
the country of Cusco will probably learn of the demise of their envoy and they will probably wage war on the country of whatever the fuck is Oscar's country named, right? And that's probably going to be what happens, right? I can finally make some predictions. Good. I like it. Uh, anything else in particular? Some things are still kind of tough to understand, uh, but... Um, I have no doubt that they are caused by uh, the adaptation simply skipping a lot, right? Like, I'm having trouble understand why Tinasha is so obsessed with Oscar being the perfect foil to her, right? I... Uh, it wasn't shown. It's not like I'm having trouble understand why Miralis was in the war room, uh, a part of the inner circle, but rather it was never stated. So that's another thing that was probably skipped again. So that still seems to be an issue. Alas. Uh, but if you can notice that, observe it, and just let it go, it's fine. It's fine, honestly. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed this episode. I'm wondering where it's gonna go uh, now. Are we headed towards the war with, uh, with Kuskul? Are we heading towards some sort of a story of, like, diverging... Uh, uh, timelines or something, right? Are we, like... Is the war going to be a canon event that has to happen? Or is Miralis there to prevent it because it cannot happen, right? Are, are we going for the simple of mages versus kingdom fight? Or are we going for the white-haired dude is apparently, like, 50 million years old and he wants to merge all the timelines and screw with the nature and unravel the threads of reality or right are we going like low fantasy are we going high fantasy are we going interdimensional tomb fuckery i don't know uh we'll see where it goes but uh, i've enjoyed it so far uh this was probably one of the better episodes so far Honestly, I liked it. I enjoyed it. So more of this. Hopefully. Hopefully we get more of this. And now that the main plotline is established, I think that's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I think that's going to be it <laughs> about this episode from me. But maybe you guys have something more to add on the topic. If so, say so in the comments down below. What did you think of this episode? My reaction, my theories, stuff like that. No spoilers. Please, I beg of you, spoilers can go to my Discord here. Also in the description below. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe to be notified of future videos. Not only unnamed memory, but also Yukiuna is a hero. A Sentai Daishkaku, uh, Kaiju number eight, Kaito Ultimate Blue Archive, and you know, Spice and Wolf. Plenty others coming in the future. Click the bell to be notified of when I go live because I do sometimes. Support the channel if you want monetarily on Patreon for where on Patreon down below, where for 10 bucks a month you get early access to non-seasonal shows like uh, Yuki Yuna, and for just a dollar you get a role on the Discord and a place in the credits. You can also support me directly on YouTube via membership, super thanks, super chats, and if you don't want to spend any money whatsoever, you don't have to. Share my content, spread the word, it costs absolutely nothing and helps the channel a lot. And now, with all of that out of the way, that's gonna be it from me for today. So as always, you guys do all the good stuff, and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Cheers! And here's my wonderful Patreons, QB, Without a Net, Chris Viver, Watson, Zara, and Yuki, Ala, Ishtamu, Dr. Wataka, Master Marsh, Fassel, and Hans Peter. And you can join them if you want without having to spar with Tinasha.